I'm Russ Kickle. On this episode of American Reef, we're going to discuss the perfect reef tank. So when I say perfect reef tank, let me elaborate a little bit. A few months ago, I was over with Mike and we were talking about tanks, this, that, and the other. And he started talking about how he wanted to upgrade his big tank now to a 500. And, you know, I kind of thought, hey, why 500? Why not even go bigger, right? Because um, he definitely had the space in his basement. And, um, and his answers basically kind of caught me off guard a little bit and I thought, wow, this is a good session to actually record. So I fired up my camera and we kind of just had a Q&A back and forth on some of the things that he thought made a perfect, you know, reef tank. And again, I figure, why not learn from somebody who's had multiple decades into this hobby, right? So he's already had tanks up to 1,200 to small nano tanks. So he's, you know, figured out what kind of works best, right? And um, again, if you're a new hobbyist, I figured, hey, that conversation and his answers would be good uh, that you could actually learn to see maybe some things you haven't considered. And then same thing if you're an experienced hobby, right? Meaning this dude had a 1,200 gallon tank. And I know for me, in my mind, hey, bigger is better. Um, and he can kind of give you some reasons why maybe 1,200 isn't the, the best choice, right? And uh, again, I think this video, you'll find something useful, whether you're, again, new to the hobby or experienced. And again, if you're looking for what I consider one of the best fish foods on the planet, head on over to American Reef, hpd.com. That's American Reef, HPD. And lastly, if you're looking for some reef keeping kind of product, give my sponsors a chance, turn that business. They're good, honest guys. Again, deserve that chance. That's Tunzi, that's Bulk Reef Supply, and that's Premium Aquatics. Now let's head on over and hear what Mike has to say. Eventually what I hope to do is replace these two tanks, put a frag tank, a 500 gallon tank in here, replace the 90 gallon frag tank by putting most of these frags into that tank, because this is totally full frag tank, put those into the 500 along with what's in the 300 and just let it go nuts for a few years. Probably have a little small frag tank. I know I say small, but it'll probably be a 40 gallon frag tank or something to that effect. But what I want to do is set up the tank. I probably still keep a nano but it'll probably be sitting right next to the sump so it can just drain real easy. I'm trying to make, when I do this, it's gonna be even easier and simpler than what I have now. So there'll be a 500 gallon tank here. There's a space back there so I can get behind it. There will be, all the equipment will be outside and under the sump. The tank will sit lower. It'll probably sit as high as these rather than as high as that. So I can look at the tank from the top and take photographs from the top. That's the plan, because when I had the 1200, it came to right here on me. Right. It was perfect because I could look at the top all the time. Right. And despite how nice a tank looks from a, in front, from above, it's right. 10 times better. Right. Okay, so again, you've got decades of experience and all this sort of stuff. Okay, so let's talk about this dream tank now. Because again, you had the biggest, so you already kind of know that 500 is kind of the, the right size. 500 is the right size. I can fit it in this room. With LED lights, I don't have to worry about cooling it. 
air conditioning vent will sit down and blow on it, keep it cool. Uh, Paula, it'll be a, a uh, powder dusted stand that I'm having custom made for it so that it's lower. There'll be a big sump. I don't know what the sump will be yet or how it's going to work. I got to see how high I make the tank. So it, there's still a lot to work on. This is probably not going to happen until next summer. So I basically have eight or nine months of planning to do. So, well, well, you already mentioned a couple things that you said, okay, the equipment's going to be under the outside. Yeah, I'm getting too old to act, right. be stretching around, moving tubes, turning stuff. Basically, all I'm going to have is the overflow from the tank, shoot into the sump. All the equipment's going to be outside. There'll be a big, cal big Destaco calcium reactor. There'll be a big skimmer. There'll be a big Miracle Mud refugium. Uh, there'll be a, a GFO reactor, and I don't even know what else I'll have on it. But that's basically it. You'll still put that all on the outside. It'll all be on the outside like, in a sump. You know, okay. Yeah. So again, it's funny. I just want to pick your brain a little bit. So the takeaway: a lower tank, so you can see top down into this thing. Right. Right. Again, equipment on the outside. You were talking again deeper and wider right right why would no it's longer and wider it's not going to be deeper okay no no i have right, right. 36 inch arms i can reach to the bottom of a 32 inch tank once you go beyond that i can't get to the bottom so with here i'm going to be not be able to get to, into the back for f four feet of it but i can get mostly to the back but from behind i can get to the back and get to the side i can get to most of it and so when i mean deeper i mean like deeper as in four feet front to back right. so it will actually come out to about here right. so my chair will move over about a foot right right now tell me why you like that as opposed to kind of like because this tank is pretty deep like your big tank here is pretty deep my 1200 was four feet front to back Sanjay's tank is almost four feet front to back. Actually, I think it is four feet front to back. When you have four, four feet front to back, you really have that depth. You really have a much nicer view of the tank versus three feet is nice, two feet is nothing. I mean, I remember my standard two foot, 240 gallon tank. It looked like a 55 gallon tank because the corals just get so big now and so full. If you don't give them full space to grow out, you're missing out. Right, right. So again, those years are telling you four feet front to back is your... Four feet front to back is my perfect front to back. The question is how to get it in <laughs> through the doors. I have to hire some really big, strong men to get it in to figure out how to do it. Sure. Because that's not going to be an easy process. We can cut out some wall. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not cutting out any walls. I got enough wall here, space here. Mm -hmm. The quick key is the door through the garage. Yeah. I can see that, right? Yeah. So that's also why I have to measure the door to see how we're going to get it through. Sure. So you know you're going to go LED lights. You know your equipment's going to go on the outside. You're still kind of fuzzy in, so to speak. Are you going to go rimless? Or no. So that doesn't bother you? That doesn't bother me. Okay. Rims and Euro bracing and bracing across the top really doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, as long as it's sturdy. Because from my mind, that will be my last tank. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm getting old enough. I know. I mean, when I get frags that are this small, I could be dead before they look like anything. <laughs> so I'm, I'm much more hesitant in getting the quarter-inch frags now. Uh, would you do starboard again? Remember how you did starboard on the Elos? I probably will do starboard on the bottom just to protect it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to have a whole lot of stuff on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I want to see over time that's now been about a year and a half two years on the elos the bottom still looks pretty good it's pretty stable mm -hmm. i don't have a lot of dirt or anything on it so i'm also going to do much more water flow across the bottom okay so i'm not going to have any of the dead spots that i have in here okay it's gonna be a lot more open than this tank is so there there are some a lot of positives sure sure i mean this is this tank is obviously packed too uh most people would frown on that but I don't accumulate a lot of detritus in this tank because of what I, how I maintain it. Right. If this was a separate entity, that would probably, I would probably be having algae and other problems. Right. But because of what I do in this tank, it's not problematic. Sure. And now you were talking about having another frag tank. Would you plumb that also into the big tank? That'll probably sit over a section of the sump of the big tank. What I would like to do is have a sump that's almost as big as that 300 gallon tank. 
because I mean I don't do anything in here but fish stuff so there would be a frag tank just sitting above it just with an overflow and a little pump going through it and a light above it so it can just go in and out I'm trying to make things as simple as I can because mm -hmm. it'll be a frag slash quarantine tank just like this is okay. so it'll probably be eight inches high probably three feet long two feet wide and sit over the sump no no would you like on the big tank would you do the coast to coast kind of overflow box like the Sanjay has on his? I would think of that, but all I want is it to come down one spot and as close to the sump as possible. I want as little plumbing as I can manage. So maybe coast to coast on the side. Yeah. You know, on left side or the right side. Got it. And so what would the total water volume of the whole system in your mind be? It would be 500 for the, the tank probably another 200 for the sump, probably another 26 for this, mm -hmm. and probably another 50 for the frag tank. So you're looking 800 gallons okay. about. And then it was the miscellaneous. Okay. Yeah, fewer miscellaneous. I, I, I've done the miscellaneous. I'm trying to make it as okay. clean and neat as I can. Because basically I will be able to sit right here, look at this tank, have TV, have everything I want right here. Right, right. Now, would you go like high tech, low tech? What's your tech component? The main tech is going to be water movement. I want to make sure I get as much flow because to me, flow is becoming even more important than light now. Sure. So I want as much flow as I can without blasting the corals. Uh, I'm going to have a big skimmer. The technology on that will be it will have a self cleaning head. Sure. So I it doesn't really matter which skimmer you get. If you clean the head every day, it works a lot better than one you don't clean regularly. Right. So it'll be easy to clean, and it's also gonna have the shutoff, so that if it overflows, it shuts the skimmer off, so I don't have to worry about that fiasco, which I've had to worry about from time to time here. Uh, because it'll be sitting over there, and most of the detritus will be sucked out and put into a sump, I wanna have it baffled as such, so that there's a fair amount of area where the detritus can settle out. So when I want to do a water change, I can just run a hose down into the, into the bathroom next door, run it right into the drain, siphon everything out real easy. There'll still be the 50 gallon water reservoir in there. I'll do a 10% water change every two weeks. That is, I'll take out 50 gallons, put in 50 gallons, take 20 minutes to do. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Now, would that water change be automated? It'll be automated to the degree that all I have to do is, is turn a valve and the okay reservoir will fill it and I still like to go in with a hose and drain out the detritus. Sure. So it would be manual but yet it would be plumbed such that whatever gravity or whatever right. you want to call it. Or but the goal would be that I'm not schlepping buckets. Right. right now I still schlep buckets from here to there. With that plan there will be no schlepping. Yeah, I, I basically yeah. just gonna get longer tubing to siphon from here to there and that'll make it much easier. Got it. So similar to Sanjay's, you know, so he probably, yeah. he's, got, he's got it plumbed and he does his Yeah. Down. And like I said, I plan on having a lot more flow on the bottom of the tank. Mm -hmm. So, and I, what I also want probably going to do is put a couple power heads there that I just turn on when I want to do the water change mm -hmm. that will shoot as much detritus out over. I'll put a filter sock on one of the things, collect as much detritus then, then I'll do the water change. I'm going to try, it's going to be more high tech than what I have now, but potentially it's going to be easier to, to run over time. Sure. Now, like when you see a lot of these new tank builds, for example, you see uh, a lot of the huge new tank reservoirs and they put new subfloors in as far as kind of a, I'll call it the raised quote unquote flooring, um, whether it be like the rubber floors with the plumbing, doing any of that kind of stuff or? The, the, the sump will probably sit on a couple of bricks mm -hmm. or cinder blocks. That's right. going to be as high tech as it is. Here it is. It's going to be a little bit higher than the floor right. just so I can drain it real easy into the drain. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be as high tech as it's going to be. Okay. I mean, I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel here. Right. Probably what I'll do is there'll be, I, when I take this tank out, they'll redo the floor. They'll match this floor to that. Then I will put bricks around the bottom to hold the, the sump. I'll put some styrofoam above that. The sump will sit on that, that'll be it. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to look into, again, put a new drainage system so when tanks overflow, for example, you know, it catches it and prevents there, it. There shouldn't be a whole lot of overflows with this. There should be 
designed as such. I mean, I've not had that tank overflow, knock on wood. I've not had this tank. The only tank that has overflowed is this one. This one will be sitting next to that one, so if it does overflow, it'll shoot into that tank. Right, right, right. Yeah, because it'll be above it, right? Yeah. Or, cool. Well, good. And that's coming, you said, yeah, approximately a year. By this time next year, if everything goes right, I will have that in this place. <laughs> but that'll be, you know, it'll be a four-month build. The problem is going to be taking everything out of there, moving it, getting this tank out and putting this tank in. Best world, I can slide the 500 in and then slide the 300 out. Whether that is reality or not is an entirely different matter. Sure, sure. But that is, that is what the goal, if I can do that, if I can put the 500 in, then hire guys to come take the 300 gallon out, which I'm probably going to end up having to do, that's probably what we're going to have to do. What I have to do is measure and see, because for a while, well, probably for three or four or five days, there may not be a sump or a skimmer. Right. And I think everything will be fine during that time because the, the tank's stable enough and I'm not going to be adding enough new stuff. Right. It'll just be a hassle to do that, but I, I think I can get away with that. Right. But again, it'll be, it'll be... It'll be interesting. Yes. It'll be worth documenting while you're doing it. Yeah. So, so hopefully you plan on taking vacation that week right. while I'm doing this so you can film it all and... Uh, that's the plan. Our, our uh, <laughs> place in the, in the world of insanity will be forever... That's for right. solidified. That's exactly it.